Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. We start by seeing the San Fernando Valley, 16 kilometers north of Los Angeles. On the road, we see young Natalie driving alone. Suddenly, a mountainside collapses onto her car, pushing it over a cliff, causing her to fall. She survives the fall, but the car is teetering on the edge of a further drop. Moments later, a helicopter arrives, and a reporter interviews firefighters, one named Jobs and another Marcus. They also introduce their best, the leader, Firefighter Ray, with over 600 rescues under his belt. They arrive at the scene to rescue Natalie, whose car is about to fall. Ray takes safety measures and directs the helicopter's approach. His assistants begin the rescue and descend to retrieve Natalie. Job secures a cable to the car, but it slips, leaving him trapped, prompting Ray to continue the rescue. He quickly grabs Natalie and orders the cable cut from the car, freeing Jobs and saving everyone. At the California Institute of Technology, Professor Lawrence talks about earthquakes, one of which occurred in Japan and shifted an island a little over two meters from its original position. He mentions the largest recorded earthquake was a magnitude 9.5, generating tsunamis over 20 meters high. In his studies, he discovered that on the San Andreas Fault, which runs beneath California, earthquakes occur every 150 years. However, he warns these events are overdue, but it's only a matter of time before a new impact occurs on the tectonic plates. In the seismology lab, researcher Kim shows Lawrence some magnetic data captured by their sensors in regions around Las Vegas, which preceded some tremors. With this information, they can predict the next tremor, so Kim suggests they should study the area. Back at his home, Ray calls his daughter Blake, who lives with her mother, as the parents are in the process of divorcing. Ray spends time looking at his daughter's things and finds a memento from when they were a complete family. At a dam, the two scientists check if their equipment is effective and happily discover they can predict tremors. Unfortunately, the sensors suddenly capture high magnetic signatures, followed by a massive magnitude 7 earthquake, cracking the dam's walls. People flee in panic, and as Kim tries to leave, he sees everything collapsing. He sees a little girl and takes her with him but can't reach Lawrence. He throws the girl to his colleague, while he gets trapped on an iron bar and, unfortunately, is swept away by the debris in the water. This leaves his friend stunned and paralyzed by the loss. Back to Ray, he is informed about the tragic event and then visits his daughter Blake's house, where his ex-wife Emma lives with her current husband Daniel. Ray apologizes to Blake for not being able to take her to the volleyball game, but Daniel says he will travel for work and can take her to college, so she agrees. They say goodbye, and before leaving, Ray leaves his daughter's bike with Emma, agreeing to sign the papers she sent. Ray leaves disappointed, still hoping for a reconciliation. At the fire station, Ray sees the tragedy caused by the dam's water that swept away nearby cities, and they need to start rescues. On Daniel's private jet, he talks with Blake and shows her his nearly completed building, which will be the tallest and most beautiful in San Francisco. The two arrive at his company, and she waits in the reception area. Meanwhile, in memory of Kim, Lawrence decides to give an important interview and present his late friend's work. Suddenly, his assistants call him and show data confirming that the San Andreas Fault is about to suffer significant impacts. Lawrence analyzes the maps and, based on the information, predicts that the San Andreas Fault is about to collapse. This shocks everyone present, and Lawrence orders them to notify everyone. In the reception of Daniel's building, Blake meets a young man named Ben, who is nervous about a job interview. Soon, Ben's brother Ali arrives, accompanying him on this journey. Knowing his shy brother, Ali asks for Blake's number to give to Ben, leaving him even more embarrassed. When Ben is called for his interview, Ollie stays and talks with Blake. While Emma is talking with a businesswoman, Ray calls her and apologizes for his unpleasant behavior earlier. She forgives him, but suddenly everything shakes, and the building sways. Emma is terrified and tells Ray where she is, so he heads to the location, witnessing the beginning of destruction on the way. In the laboratory, Lawrence realizes the severity of the earthquake, 
predicting magnitudes between 6 and 11 on the Richter scale. The worst is yet to come, as data shows the entire San Andreas Fault will be affected. Meanwhile, Blake bids farewell to Ollie and leaves with Daniel. However, in the parking lot, they are startled by a tremor and, fearing the worst, speed up the car. Unfortunately, the building suffers significant damage, and they crash. The driver is crushed, and Blake is trapped in the back seat. Daniel exits the car, promising to get help, leaving Blake even more terrified. He approaches a security guard for assistance, but the panic among the people is overwhelming, and many die as walls collapse. Daniel, frightened for his life, decides to leave the building. Ben, seeing Daniel leave alone, decides to go after Blake. In the helicopter, Ray notices the city shaking and buildings collapsing. Emma tries to convince people to go to the rooftop, but no one follows her due to the overwhelming panic. She makes it to the rooftop, but the building continues to collapse, and she falls along with the debris several floors below. Fortunately, she survives and climbs to a visible point for Ray, who soon arrives to rescue her. Ray launches the rescue basket, and as a building falls next to Emma, she runs and manages to grab the basket before everything collapses on her. Ray then brings Emma inside and flies away, dodging collapsing buildings. The city is left in ruins after the tremor. Back to Blake, she calls her father and informs him of her danger, giving him her location before the call is cut. Ray tells Emma he's going to rescue their daughter. Blake is terrified, but fortunately, Ben and his brother find her. They try to free her using their strength, but the debris above the car is too heavy. Ben thinks quickly and uses a hydraulic tool to lift the weight, but it's not enough. However, using his intelligence, he deflates the tires, lowering the car enough for Blake to free herself and escape before it's crushed. They're relieved, and she thanks them for the rescue. However, the danger is real, and they need to leave the building quickly. On the streets, debris crushes some people, and the trio finds refuge in a safe location. In the laboratory, Lawrence is notified that the tremor was a magnitude 9.5, and magnetic readings indicate the worst is yet to come. The trio of young people enter an electronics store, looking for a way to communicate, and manage to contact their parents. Blake tells them what happened in Daniel's action of abandoning her, angering Emma. Ray instructs Blake to go to a higher location for him to rescue her. Meanwhile, in the city streets, the cowardly Daniel throws a man into the street to shelter himself from the debris sweeping the population. In the helicopter, the couple realizes they have a problem, and suddenly the aircraft begins to fall. Ray, being a skilled pilot, manages to land safely in a store. They grab some clothes and escape the chaos, finding a car belonging to a thief. They take the car, but before they leave, an armed thief threatens Ray. The firefighter quickly disarms the man and gets into the car to drive away. On California TV, Lawrence makes a live announcement to everyone who can watch. He warns that the tremors haven't ended, and a larger earthquake is imminent, with San Francisco being the central point of the epicenter. On the road, the couple talks in the car when Emma alerts Ray to something. Ray stops the car and gets out, observing a large crack in the ground, identifying the San Andreas Fault, which prevents them from passing. Ray reverses a bit and asks an elderly couple with car trouble if there's a way around the fault, but the man says only by going back a hundred kilometers. Recognizing the man's cap, Ray inquires about a parachuting school, and in exchange for guiding them, they give their car to the old couple. At the parachuting school, Ray finds a small plane, which they will use to continue their journey. While refueling, Ray apologizes for being one of the reasons for their separation and laments the day they lost their other daughter, recalling that he couldn't save her from a dangerous canoeing trip. Traumatized, Ray became indifferent and blamed himself, distancing himself from everyone. Emma consoles him, saying it wasn't his fault. After reconnecting, they set off to find Blake. In San Francisco, we see the trio with a crowd heading for an evacuation route. Along the way, they stop at a fire truck to gather medical supplies and a communication radio. The high point of the city they were heading to was blocked by destruction, so they must go to another location. However, Ben observes that people are heading to the mountains and suggests they do the same, but Blake insists that her father will come to rescue them. Ollie also insists on going to a high location and following Blake's plan. 
Ray and Emma fly over the city, witnessing chaos and destruction at the airport, making it impossible to land. Spotting a baseball stadium, Ray directs the plane to crash into the sea, while he and Emma prepare to jump into the stadium. Ray ties Emma to himself and jumps to the ground, fortunately landing safely. In Lawrence's office, the group feels another massive tremor, but Lawrence says the worst will not be there, but in San Francisco. Meanwhile, Blake, Ben, and Ollie are heading to a high location, and she notices Daniel's building nearby. Suddenly, the tremor hits the city, causing further destruction, and amidst the chaos, Ben gets injured in the leg by a shard of glass. Blake stays by Ollie's side as buildings fall like sandcastles, bridges split in half, and the city sways like ocean waves. Ray tries to guide people to shelter and helps a young woman escape certain death. After the dust settles, Ray and Emma find themselves facing a completely destroyed city, fearing the worst for their daughter. Determined not to give up, Ray decides to navigate around the city by boat. Meanwhile, Blake helps remove the glass and bandages Ben's leg. Back in California, Lawrence analyzes the data and discovers that the tremor was a magnitude 9.6, the largest ever recorded. However, the tragedy hasn't ended, as Ray notices the sea receding, signaling an incoming tsunami. They need to leave the city's bay quickly. An alarm sounds throughout the city, and hearing this, the trio of young people rush to reach the building. Ray, on the boat, sees the monstrous tsunami approaching and realizes their only chance of survival is to outrun it before the wave breaks. Ray speeds up, tilting the boat almost 90 degrees. A large cargo ship appears in front of them, but Ray manages to narrowly avoid the danger. Back to Daniel, he's crossing the Golden Gate Bridge when the cargo ship, turned by the tsunami, crashes into the bridge, destroying it and crushing Daniel under a container. We then see the massive wave sweeping away everything in its path, including two elderly people who embrace each other before dying. People in downtown are also surprised by the wave and ships being hurled onto them. Back to the trio, they climb the stairs but can't continue as the passage is blocked. They end up on a lower floor, and soon they hear a noise. Looking through the glass, they see the huge wave knocking down buildings, and it soon crashes into theirs. As they are on a lower floor, water enters and nearly sweeps them away, but the trio holds on and manages to stay safe for now. Ray enters the submerged city and sees total destruction but still hopes to find his daughter alive. Fortunately, we see her with Ben and Ali, soon climbing up a floor. While Ali looks for something useful, Ben admires Blake's talent for taking care of herself and others. They end up kissing, something that makes Ali happy as his brother has finally found someone. When the little boy goes to fetch water, he sees two adults in a boat, and when Blake goes to sea, she realizes it's her parents. Unfortunately, they can't get Ray's attention, who soon drifts away. Suddenly, a green light catches Emma and Ray's attention, and when they turn around, they see their daughter nearby. A joyful reunion, but the young people are not safe. With the building shaking and now sinking some floors, water enters the floor causing panic in the young people. Fortunately, Ben grabs his brother and takes him to safety, he even tries to go back to look for Blake, but the water soon covers the entire floor. Outside, Ray tells Emma to wait, as he will go to rescue their daughter, then kisses her and dives into the water. Inside the floor, we see Blake with a flashlight looking for a way out, but she can't find one, as the door has debris blocking her exit. Ray finds her and tries to clear the door, but fails. Ben leaves his brother on the floor above, asking him to wait, as he will look for Blake. Unfortunately, this heroic action is interrupted, as the building sinks a bit more, making Blake's floor completely submerged and Ben unable to help her. Meanwhile, Ray and his daughter take one last breath of air before she bids farewell, having lost all hope. She begins to sink, and her father, refusing to lose another daughter, finds extraordinary strength and pushes the debris away. He finally retrieves an unconscious Blake and takes her to the floor above. He finds Ben and his brother, and right there, tries to resuscitate his daughter. Meanwhile, the building they're in, supported by another building, is reaching its limit and is about to collapse. Ben grabs an iron pipe and tries to break the glass, seeing this, Emma observes the situation, and then rushes to use the boat to break the glass and reach her daughter. Everyone gets into the boat, and Emma accelerates as the building starts to collapse on them, but fortunately, they escape alive. 
After getting to a safe distance, they anxiously watch Ray, struggling to revive his daughter, who appears lifeless. A moment of profound sadness as they face the prospect of losing their last child. But Ray doesn't give up and continues to perform first aid. Thankfully, Blake breathes again and wakes up, embracing her parents, leaving Ben and his brother happy, and Ray relieved, having saved his daughter this time. On the other hand, Lawrence is relieved that the nightmare has finally ended, as news broadcasts worldwide report the destruction. Hours later, we see Ray and his family, along with the two brothers, in the mountains where the army has set up a support camp for the population. They look out at the destroyed city but also see ships from other countries arriving to assist.